Hello and welcome back. This is Dawn. So today I have a fun one for you. Now the new Honey Bee release is Adventure Awaits and it is a amazing release you guys. It is all about those masculine cards but I will have several vid videos here coming up in the future showing you how to feminize these but this is really focused on those men in our lives. Now, I've pulled out some of my standout favorites uh, because they pertain to the men in my life. A lot of fishing and uh, we're a big fishing family. My husband loves to um, bass fish. So first up, let's take a look at this Lovely Layers. I'm just going to quickly go through, like I said, some of my standout favorites. This is the Lovely Layers Trees. I cannot wait to break into this one. It's going to be amazing. Of course, they have a new bird. This is the owl, Lovely Layers Owl. Now these right here, this is what I'm using today. Um, I'm going to use the Lovely Layers Lures. The Lures, my husband makes fun of me. They're not lures, Dawn, they're lures. Okay, fine. There was a fishing pole one you saw there. Um, this vintage creel, um, amazing. It's going to look so good paired with all of the fishing products here. So there's another look at that fishing pole there. I love these. These three right here are going to get so much use um, in my household. In fact, it's my husband's birthday today, so I had to get his card done, which is the sponsor of this video, my husband's birthday. <laughs> of course, you've got the Hooked on You uh, stamp set here that it has great sentiments, amazing sentiments, you guys. Um, really unique ones, and they're not all super cheesy. They're actually, I like I said, I love that set. Wood, wood slices, and a trunk all in one set. You cannot go wrong with that. Look at these little cabins, you guys. You y'all know I'm a huge fan of the Lovely Layers sets from Honeybee, so there's a lot in here that I cannot wait to share with you guys. This is just great for creating some of those um what's the word I'm thinking of? collage style backgrounds, but it also coordinates with this box. So they have a little lure box that you can create. And here's uh, the die that does that. And then all of the images in here will coordinate with the panels on the box. So I will be creating that and sharing that with you. Don't you worry. And then that is also, they also have a matching die to cut out the individual elements if the 3D box is not your thing. And like I said, these are just my standout favorites. This is a very big release. So make sure that you head on over to the store and check out the entire thing. You don't want to miss it. I'll have it linked in the video description below. All right, so let's jump into the cards. Like I mentioned, we're going to be using the Lovely Layers Lures. I'm going to try my hardest to pronounce that correctly in this entire video. I will slip up though. I've pulled up a color palette here. I'm using m almost all the cardstock is coming from the Spellbinders Brights Sampler Pack. And I've pulled out the Teal Topaz, the Sunkissed, Peridot, um, Persimmon, and then a black and a white. And we're gonna go very colorful for these cards. I wanted to uh, create something bright and fun. I will have a video coming up here soon where I show you guys how to create some more realistic looking lures, but I wanted to go for the bright colorful ones. If you have fishermen in your family or perhaps you're a fisherman or fisherwoman, uh, you know that lures are fun. They're bright, they're colorful, they're shimmery, they're shiny. So these in particular are a lot of fun to play with because they're really there's no, no colors are out of bounds right this is a great masculine set if you don't like browns and dull colors and but you still want to make masculine cards fishing lures man they're they're where it's at so what i'm doing is i'm starting off by cutting all of my elements out of each of my colors so that i can then just mix and match and put my lures together now all of the layers are here this can look it looks like a lot of layers, but it's actually very easy to put together. And I'm going to show you how to layer these up. And as usual, Honeybee has done a great job at etching detail into the dies here, which makes it very easy to figure out which layers go with which. So you can see here all of that wonderful detail that's etched into the dies. This also adds a lot of texture to the finished product. So as usual, I've die cut all my pieces and then I've put them into their individual piles with all of the different colors. This is gonna make it easy for me to pick and choose which pieces that I want to layer together. Now, I'm gonna show you in real time how to put one of these dies together and then we'll fast forward to them all together. Uh, I do have an in-depth video with lots of my tips and tricks on my process as far as setting up my mass production of die cuts like this and I will link it in the video description below. 
I always use my My Sweet Petunia sticky mat. That will hold my base layer in place. My reverse tweezers are uh, indispensable for picking up these parts and then some liquid adhesive. Now the base layer does have the top layer etched into that die. So this green piece that I'm laying down, that exact shape is etched into the base layer of the die. So I easily can tell that that piece will fit right on top of that base die. Now, if you are having trouble figuring out maybe which pieces go to which, Honeybee does have layering guides that they send out with your dies when you order them, and they're also available on their website. So you can always check that out. They're very good about supplying instructions on how to layer these up. Now, you'll notice that I am using white uh, throughout my design here with all of my lures because they are going to be very multicolored. Um, I'm going for very colorful here and I'm putting them on a colored background. So to give the eyes somewhere to rest so that the colors don't vibrate off of each other or get a little too heavy looking, the white or the black or the white and the black in this case are going to be my neutrals and give the eyes somewhere to rest. So with these dies, there are some littler dies. Luckily, they are grouped all together on one die so that you don't have to keep track of a bunch of tiny dies. For instance, all of the hooks and the eyes for our lures here. Now, they're tiny. This is optional. I did cut them out. I've put down some glue and I'm using my crystal katana to pick up those little eye pieces. If you wanted, you could opt to just use a marker to put your eye in the center there, or you could use some um, Nouveau drops or even some enamel dots if you have some small enamel dots. This is the eye that you tie the lure onto the fishing string with. I've cut this out of silver cardstock and we're adding that on. Again, this is optional. If you have a silver paint pen, you could just paint that silver or a gray if you wanna use a Copic marker. Again, that is optional. It is small, but it does add a lot of detail and it makes a really big impact. So in my opinion, it was worth it here. Just making sure all my edges are lined up before I push that glue in. The nice thing about liquid, adhes liquid adhesive is it gives you some wiggle room. So until you actually push it into place, you can slide and move your dies around, which is another reason why I like to use the My Petunia Sticky Mat. I can just lay them on top of each other, and once they're all in place, I can pick it up and make sure that the edges are lined up by just um, just what nudging it just a little bit, you know? Here we're adding our hooks. They do have on their guides their recommended hooks that go with which lure, but if, you're, if you've seen fishing lures, you know, you can interchange this. Some are longer, some are smaller, some are uh, shorter, so it's up to you. And if you're ever looking for inspiration on color combos, uh, you can always look up fishing lures, lures, you can always look up fishing lures uh, on Google, and they will give you some great color combo ideas. All right, so I just finished putting together the rest of my lures, lures, <laughs> and as always, I created more than I thought I would need so that I would have plenty to play around with when it came to building my card. And for my composition, I knew I wanted to create a little grouping, but the background was a little plain. I've grabbed some waterfall cardstock and the Spellbinders Castaway folder. Now this is from my uh, collection with Spellbinders, the Seahorse Kisses collection, and I couldn't have timed the release of these better if I had tried. Um, perfect, perfect folder to use with these lures. And it adds just the right amount of texture to the background. And for this first card, I want to create a more organic cluster of the lures. So I'm choosing the small, the medium, and the large lure. That's always a good starting point when you're trying to do a more organic arrangement. Uh, choose a small, medium, and a large item and get those first, right? Odd numbers are best for organic patterns because when we see even numbers, our eyes will try to divide them into equal groups. Odd numbers keep us from doing that and keeps our layout more organic. And ultimately, I've decided to use five main elements and we're gonna start adhering them. I'm gonna use a mix of liquid adhesive and some foam. I'm gonna use two different heights of foam. So I'm starting with my back layer and I'm gonna adhere that directly to my card base using liquid adhesive. Because we have that 3D embossed background, it's not a flat surface. So make sure you're using a decent amount of glue so that you're making sure that you are actually adhering it in as many places as possible to that background. 
Now I'm using the lower 3D foam and I'm adding that to the back of my next lure. I'm also going to add an extra layer behind that hook. I used that silver cardstock there to cut my hooks from and it's thinner than my other cardstock. So I've just backed it with another hook cut from white cardstock to give it some stability. And then I'm going to adhere that down. Add a little liquid adhesive under that to the hook part and we are good. You'll notice that I overlapped my elements. That's another great thing when you're creating these um, central focal points uh, that, let's see, how do I explain this? <laughs> when you're creating these focal groups, you'll want them to be connected somehow, whether that be their proximity, they're in their color, or by their shape. And I've got all of those elements, I've ticked all those boxes, but now I'm leading the eye. So by having some of my elements touch and overlap, I am guiding the eye in which way you should um, view the design overall. So we're starting at the top right, then the oranges are flowing at a diagonal down to the lower left. So your eye is going to hit that orange, hit the next orange, hit the next orange. Now we're swinging back over to the right with the orange on that uh, bobber there. Ultimately, the perfect, perfect design here would have been my fly there if I had made a portion of that orange. So either the uh, feather part or the little plastic part that would be under the feather, if I had made that orange, it would be 100% perfect. We'd be forming an S. If you follow the oranges, it'll make an S, and that is a surefire way to lead the eye through your design. Then I'm going to add my sentiment right in the path of that S. So we're gonna lead the eye down to the sentiment. It still works here, but again, hindsight, if I had put an orange element on that fly there, on that fly lure, it would have been 100% perfect. For the sentiment, I used the hooked on you and I heat embossed that in white. And now I'm using the matching dies to cut that out. You can see here, I stamped it in black and white because I wasn't sure which one I would like better. But ultimately, I did decide on the white heat embossed one, and we will take a look at that finished card here at the end. Okay, so for this next card, we're gonna use the grid layout. So if you divided this into nine boxes, you would have a grid in the background. So we're gonna take our elements and we're gonna put each element for each grid block. So essentially we could fit say nine of these fly lures or nine of the bobbers, but some of the lures will take up two boxes. So here we're going to combine these two vertical boxes into one box by using this lure to stretch it across those two boxes. So right now we're taking up six of those squares with only using four elements. We've got one for the bobber, one for the fly lure, We've got one going vertically down, so we've got two boxes, but vertically down for that long lure. And then right under the bobber there, we're using two boxes that are side by side and combining them to make one box. So if you were to look at this, we have six boxes and we have three boxes left on the bottom. I hope that makes sense. This long lure takes up those three boxes across the bottom, creating one box. And then we have enough room here in the center to slip in our sentiment, which is also from Hooked on You. So this is a great way to use a grid layout, even though you don't have, say, nine tiny images, look at some of the bigger, the bigger um, elements, and they can stretch across multiple boxes and still keep your grid layout. Make sure that your edges are lined up to create symmetry. So here I'm just tucking these, moving these just a little bit to make sure that my edges are lined up and I have even borders around all of the edge. And then I will just be ready to adhere it. And for that, I will use the same dimension foam tape for all of them and I will back all of the hooks just to give them a little extra stability. Again, if I had thought about that up front, I would have done it when I was assembling the uh, lures, but I wasn't sure where I was going at first. So pro tip. The lures, if you're doing it from the metallic cardstock and you're going to pop them up, make sure you add an extra layer underneath just so that they aren't flimsy. Okay, so let's take a look at the finished cards. So the first one we did the organic layout and like I mentioned, we have a cluster of five elements here and we're leading the eye with that orange. We're going from the top right in an S shape down to the sentiment 
and ending off over in the lower left. I finished off the background with a splattering of these gems. These are from the Adventure Awaits uh, gem stickers from Honeybee. Beautiful colors in this one. And that embossing folder, that castaway embossing folder is the perfect backdrop for these. Now, the second card, we did the grid layout. Pretty much self-explanatory. I went through everything here. I also added a little sprinkling of gems to the background. You can get away with this because it kind of looks like bubbles in the background. So if you just love you a little bit of bling, but you want to make a masculine card, this is the way to go because you can sneak in those quote unquote bubbles. <laughs> now, of course, there are Fisher women out there and this looks great in a more feminine color palette as well. We use the same grid layout. This time I added a little bit of Spectrum Noir glitter pin to some of the lures and I love how this turned out. I absolutely love these lures. You will be seeing more of these. I'm absolutely going to do a video on how to do some more um, realistic looking lures. So stay tuned for that. And you are going to be seeing a lot of this release because honestly, there is a bunch of amazing products in this release, you guys, and I am behind on videos. So be on the lookout. Mass videos coming. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. And don't forget, you can find all the links in the video description box below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.